Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Beyond the Bar podcast. I'm your host, Anissa Tova. And today I have a very special guest with me here today, uh, James Parker. He is a, a guy who has so many interesting layers to him. He is a cowboy, and I mean a real cowboy, an actor. He's a proud owner of Jimmy Lee Range, and he's also an athlete. Uh, he's a uh, two times World Series team roping qualifier, I think. If not, he'll correct me. He's also a highly experienced rancher. Uh, he's a former college athlete and a coach. And he really figured out how to blend the athleticism with his deep love for horses and ranching. And that's not all. From writing lessons with literally A-list actors to finding his unexpected path into the film industry, he just has an incredible story. Uh, James, welcome to the show. Hey, Denise, uh, thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So why don't we start with your love for horses? Um, let, let's go back to your childhood and and tell me how have you found horses to almost provide like a form of escape and 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 you know during the childhood and then how it just sort of propelled you into the film industry well um it started when i was younger uh we were living in uh fort worth texas and you know we did all we always did summer school and stuff like that and it was just, you know, you, you got to have projects and you, your parents want you to have something to do during the summer. And so I started getting, we started uh, going to the ranch uh, in Fort Worth and we started hanging out over there. We started learning. Me and my brother had came with me. He didn't have the patience. So uh, I ended up staying there and I enjoyed it. I was able to ride horses and ever since then it just stuck with me. And it was like a very therapeutic to me. It's like they felt felt the stuff um, that what was going on, the loss that I have lost because I didn't grow up with my father, so it was like something I can talk to or you know just uh, just relate relate to. It was like my uh, my couch. I sit on my couch and they were just there to come for me. Big twelve hundred pound animal. Wow. So, that was uh, so powerful. Yeah, that. And it just stuck with it just stuck with me, and I just started to learn how to train them and become close to them, and and it's just I I would never guess I'd be doing living a dream with them right now. <laughs> you are, you know, going back to uh, your love for horses. Um, I never actually sat on a horse, and I have so much respect. They almost mirror your energy. Um, you know, I remember watching them from distance. Um, going through stuff in my life too. And there was something very calming, yet I was a little fearful. It was a fear of unknown, but it sounds to me like as a young boy, you were gravitating, you were being pulled toward them. Do you remember how old you were when you, the first time you sat on a horse and what it felt like? Uh, I was about uh, like six years old. Um, and it was just like, you got this big powerful being, but it's like, you know, you know, when they smell you and they know what's going on, they know they know you're inexperienced. They know when you're sad and it just felt like I was at a safe haven to me. Wow. And then once I start to better understand them, uh, it just gave me a, a lot more respect for them. And just a, a just a develop into a, a passion and love. Wow. So what happened? How did you actually almost like translated or how did you transform your love for horses to then right it was a form of escape and 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 the connection um to did you did you continue when you went to high school and you played football did you continue to ride and and ranch tell me that story so when when i was younger uh i had a uh five siblings and one mother and she was working a lot of jobs and you know going home to you know it was rough going home so horses once i start to 
better my horsemanship and start to uh, train horses and feed them. I had a job. They were paying me, you know, as a kid, I was getting paid $30 a week. And wow. that just uh, developed more. It, it made me, it gave me responsibility. I was able to make money. I was like, I'm making money. I'm this young. I was able to help, uh, you know, my mother, we struggled at the house at times. And I was able to use some of the money that I made. I'll go buy bread. That's when food was cheaper at back in, back then. <laughs> but I yeah. was able to help out, <laughs> help out in the house. and. Just the, you know, the childhood was really tough, but the, my escape was with the horses and, you know, I love cleaning the stalls. I love, uh, you know, cleaning them and cleaning out their water troughs. And I enjoyed the responsibility of it. it I enjoyed that and I enjoyed uh, feeding the cattle and I enjoyed just doing all that stuff. And and then when I got to high school, you know, when you get those teenage years, you kind of like, uh, okay, your mind kind of drifts. You kind of like, oh, you want to get into girls. You want to, you know, you got the sports going. So you kind of wanted to get that. My mom was always like, man, I wish you get back into horses. Because football and other sports were just, you know, it's a team game. I'm, I'm a team player. But it's just, you know, you got injuries. And then you just... Yeah. You know, it's it's uh it's like we put on these pads and we're kinda like we're uh, you know, gladiators and my mother just she liked that animal aspect. It's, it's nothing like competing with an animal or a horse and winning on them. That that it's that's a team to me, but it's a it's different from playing tackle football. <laughs> yeah. So uh right. <laughs> yeah. <Wait a> bit. <laughs> so so I will always come back in the summer and I'll help out and uh, help out the ranch in the summer times uh, when I was playing high school football, when I wasn't playing. And even when I got to college, I, whenever I had time away, I would come back and help out for a little bit. And when I got done playing, that's when I, you know, I finally was like, all right, let me get, let me get back into it. And in 2016, that's when I started to get back into horses. And because, um, you know, I graduated high school in 2007. And then I was away from horses for just quite a quite a, quite some time, and it was just it was like I wasn't the person I was inside when I when I had them. I was just kind of trying to find myself, and then when I got back to them, it just it, it was like a sigh of relief when I got back to, got back with horses. And wow. from that point on, I was I was able to uh, stay consistent with them ever since then. You had that special connection. It's almost like undescribable. You just, you just, you, you'll never, you'll probably never lose it. Um, that's, uh, that is so powerful. So how, tell me the story of, um, of the ranch. Um, tell me, tell me about Jimmy Lee Ranch. Oh, Jimmy Lee Ranch just uh, came about just, uh, uh, it, the name comes from my nickname. I got it from my my grandmother. We we share the same birthday. Uh, she always called me Jimmy Lee, and so I was like, when I get my own ranch, I'm gonna name it Jimmy Lee Ranch. And so um, just to honor her, um, you know, her, we both have the March 15th birthday, so that just passed Ooh. last week. So uh, happy belated yes, birthday. Just, Thank you. <laughs> so uh, it just came about. I just like it was like always my dreams. Like I, I wanted to play, be uh, a pro athlete, NFL player, but but I only wanted to do it just to live the dream I'm doing now. And I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting the route. You know, you know, you have different curveballs in life to get you back to on um, path to where you're going to, to today. So I was mm -hmm. just just watching and going through like when I had that big gap of uh, not being around horses and stuff. Uh, I think it helped me get back on path and stay consistent with what I'm doing today. And I wasn't never expecting to do movies, TV shows, commercials. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but my lifestyle and my dreams and the love of horses led me to that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because you really almost stayed open as life unfolded in front of you and gave you these opportunities um 
and yeah, yes, your journey led you to film roles in Outlaw Posse, Bass Reeves. You worked alongside of Cedric the Entertainer, Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, some huge names. Uh, tell me about how did you land the first role and what was that like? Well, I was just, um, I post on my Instagram a lot. Just like I always post my horse stuff on there and me if i'm working cattle or i'm just riding horses or training horses um, I, I would just post it on my instagram and at first i was just posting horses i wasn't posting me i was just posting the horse <laughs> uh <laughs> just because i enjoyed posting them and people will always tell me like hey you always posting horses how come you don't post yourself and i was just like i don't want i don't want to uh, you know post myself i like i'd rather post the horse so uh i've got a you know i received a message on there and asking me if I'd be interested in, you know, the opportunity. So I, I sent over some pictures and videos and the casting director was like, she was very excited about everything and she was able to, uh, you know, get me on and she told me to come on out, come on out. And I was excited to get out there. And once I was, uh, once I was able to land that role, I was able to learn so much and, and enjoy my time just to be around those people, just see how everybody is, uh, they're working hard at the same time they were enjoying it as, as well. So that's one thing that I like about it. It makes the, it makes the long days go by pretty quick. And it, it just kind of remind me, it, it was more repetitions, but it kind of remind me like when you're doing something you love, you don't really too much care about the repetition uh, because you're so passionate about the, the end results. It's just like training horses. Just, you know, you, you do the same thing over and over, but you have a, a satisfying end result. What was the first role that you landed? Well, it was just, I was a feature extra for uh, Outlaw. And then I was just, uh, they, they, a couple of the cast members on there were telling me, it's like, hey, you got a nice smile. You got to start showing yourself more and, and then after that that's when i started um sh you know just posting myself more and being confident with that and uh showing the world my face and because i I'd rather i rather show you know dogs or horses but uh once i got on that and it, it just gave me a boost of, boost of confidence and just uh believing in myself and uh and my craft so and once the, after that happened, then then I was able to get on Bass Reeves, just, you know, the, the similar role. So uh, that was they said the same exact thing. Just continue to do that, and and that actually helped me lead, land me into a, a better role, a lead role. So I, I'm excited about that. Um, that'll be out in the uh, in the future. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's uh, what a great path. Um, are there any moments that stand out on from the movie sets? Well, just uh, seeing people joke and have fun. Uh, you know, I was watching, I was watching uh, how Mario Van Peebles how he was he was very serious and he was very uh, on time. Let's get it going, like the sense of urgency, and at the same time, he was still, you know you know, he will joke or, you know, have fun. Like it was just, just to see that, that, that just, it kept you, it kept you focused, but it kept you attention seeking. Like, let's get it. Let's have fun. Let's stay, let's stay locked in. And then when I was watching Cedric and just seeing how he was, you know, just laid back and relaxed and, you know, still, you know, having fun as well. So it's just that one thing I noticed that you don't want to get nervous and, stuff like that or you don't want to be over too much uh overwhelming but it was to see people like that in their relaxed element it makes you relax as well yeah hmm. have you taken a celebrity who has never sat on a raw on a horse or have you actually helped train a celebrity who has never sat on a horse to where they need to actually ride a horse and in, in a particular movie feature? Well, I was, I actually helped out an actor, uh, Jason Mitchell. He played in uh, Straight Outta Compton. Uh, he came out to my ranch and he wanted to uh, 
to ride and he was able to come out and ride. Um, he did, did really well, actually. Um, really? And I remember he he had actually asked me if I was, you know, ever thought about getting into acting. I said, no, I kind of like what I'm doing now. <laughs> there then, you go. <laughs> you know, and then it just randomly come up. And now, now I'm doing it. <laughs> And I and I've had uh, lower lower level actors come out and come for riding lessons as well, and because they want to get better as roles and stuff. And um, I know my uncle is telling me he's been taking riding lessons because he wants to get get on the uh, horse scene as well. He's also in entertainment. And that's not the only thing that you do i mean it sounds like a more than a full-time job but you're also competing i mean you do have a drive tell me about your competitions i mean they're fierce so uh, i compete in uh team roping and i do ranch rodeos ranch rodeos is more of a four team um we have a lot of uh, it it correlates with uh what we do on a ranch so what we will do at the ranch rodeos uh team roping is a, a big event what's I really drive for. Uh, I have goals for it. Uh, it's, to, it's to qualify for Vegas every year. Uh, in Vegas, they have a, a seventeen million dollar payout in each event. Wow. Usually, people walk walk away with six figures, and that's 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 the goal and the dream. And I came close last uh, last year. Uh, this year, I'm ready to uh, capitalize on everything. Me and my partner uh, Garrett Lazaro and Wyatt Clark. So. Uh, yeah, we've been practicing really hard for it, and team roping is team roping is. Uh, I like I like all the team sports and because team works makes the dream work, and uh, I, I enjoy being teaming up with these guys, and um, it's a fun and it's fun. We have fun and we enjoy it when we and we make sure horses enjoy it and have fun as well. We don't want them to get burnt out throughout the year, so we 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 uh keep them keep them locked in as well because they're athletes as, as well <laughs> yeah i like the way you put it yeah you can't forget about the animal that it's there there's just there's just so much and it sounds like with your passion for horses there's a respect and true love that you take such a great care of them and and you really do take it very seriously um if you win what are you going to do with all that money Oh, I'm just going to uh, put it towards my ranch and uh, probably buy some more cattle and uh, donate some stuff to charities and help out people in need. Because uh, there's probably another James Parker out there uh, that are you know that needs the help, and they're they're probably on the same journey or they don't have the funds to get where they need to go. And and I would like to help that young man or young young lady get up there and pursue their dreams. You have such a great heart. I do have chills, and I and I and I say why is because, and I think I've shared that with you. Um, you know, when I when I came to the U.S., I was a young girl. I came from another country, and I've experienced a lot, including homelessness. So, and it was people like you, um, you know, that that help, and it's um, it's 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 a great and honorable thing to do is being in a position to help others. So, and and. So that's um, it's it's such an honor, you know, to have you on a show so that you can share your story. And I know there's there's more to come. We'll definitely I'll be watching. I'll be definitely watching. Are there any are there any other exciting projects that you can reveal that you can let us take a peek or do we have to wait? Well, I got one coming up that I'm very excited about, but we I can't really touch too much on it, but. That's uh, the one that I'm, uh, I got, you know, I'm not an extra. I'm actually, uh, you know, lead role, lead role for that. So I'm pretty excited about that one. And I feel like that's just like with life, uh, you, you got to start small. You got to crawl before you can walk. And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, when you do those small roles, it'll eventually land into those big, big roles. And, and I feel like my, my, it's that patience is a virtue. That quote is like, phenomenal for like you know my life you know so whenever you want to get good at something you just gotta you gotta take those small baby steps it's 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 tough but you gotta have patience 
great, great message. I mean, really, really. And just stay open to what's coming and be patient, be consistent and, and uh, be willing to give. Um, James, it's been a real pleasure uh, to have you here with us and, and thank you so much for sharing your story. Well, thank you for having me. And I know that our viewers and listeners will be watching. So make sure that you follow James Parker on his Instagram. We'll be posting the uh, his link to it below uh, in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Beyond the Bar Podcast. Follow us on all social media. And until next time, stay curious and stay inspired.